parts of. Okay. Obviously, if they're that yard shorter than what their next bit is, that yeah. really help. Keep the swing really short. Okay, but I want you to go as fast as you can. Fast, fast, fast. Go on, fast, 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 fast. Good. This is going to give you clubbing speed. Yeah, I mean, that's super low, but it's allowing you now to jump. We've got all this movement. There we go. We've got all okay, this. Yeah. Well we have to use this to square the club up. Suddenly the club <clears throat> is doing this. Yeah. If we can use this, if we've got rotation this way. Tell me about your game, Romy. What, what would you like to improve? My, the direction is always quite solid, but maybe I don't hit it as far as any other. <laughs> I don't hit it far at all. Okay. So what are your strengths then? Because I'm 4.8 then, you've got a good game. So just what? straight. Just straight, straight and a good short game. I just don't hit any greens with my irons. They let me down a lot, especially in like par threes. Right. So I bogey in most of the par threes. Is that because you're going in with more club? Yeah, or I just, it would be straight out the bottom of the club or okay. anything like that. But that's just where, I don't know, nerves come in, especially with the irons, it's the biggest problem, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. So strike? Yeah, definitely strike. Strike. Normally straight, but obviously if they're 30 yards shorter than what they're meant to be, it's not yeah. really any help. So. Okay, so it's yeah. distance, strike and distance. Yeah. And what kind of distance would you play the A time to? Mm, probably like the 120, yeah. Brilliant, well done. What we're going to do, we're going to pop back out in a bit and we're going to go inside, just do some profiling from the ground up. And then we're going to see how that affects your feel of the release. What you need to do is keep the swing really short, okay, but I want you to go as fast as you can. Fast, 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 fast. Go on, fast, 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 fast. Good. Good. And the intensity went up and you started changing the direction very quickly. Yeah. Start off high intensity. Yeah. So we're, we're like 10 out of 10 on the dial. <laughs> Zorro. And then we're going to start to just smooth it down and lengthen it a bit. So we start off at 10. And now start to dial it down, but make the swing longer. Cool. And then dial it down to like five. Different feel to that? Yeah. Push away to get the arms going. Exactly. Yeah. In both directions. Yeah. Because what's so important to get speed in that direction. Hi guys. We've just got back from the Belfry. It was our very first Zen Golf Mechanics coaching trip. And we've got another one coming and it's in Turkey, and it's at the end of November. It's a great price. We've got five nights, four days. Each day we have three and a half hours of coaching on all areas of the game. It's a deep dive, very immersive experience of Zen Golf Mechanics. And then we've got the tour player experience with Foz and Belty. It really is an amazing week. We're at the Gloria Resort in Turkey. Fantastic course, amazing hotel. Can't wait to go. Great sun, great weather. It's gonna be fantastic, guys. Check out the link and look forward to seeing you there. We have to create speed in this direction first. Yeah. So if it's too slow going back, that's not to say we can't create speed, but we've got to be super active. It's like if you're going to throw a ball and you take it back slow, you've got to be super dynamic with your movement, very, very efficient, and create, be able to create big forces very quickly to get some speed. Yeah. Whereas if you've got some momentum on the way back, you're already creating this recoil, the conditions to recoil. So what we've got to do first is recognise the momentum going back. See if you can change direction of the ball even earlier. Yes. That's it. Okay, step forward onto the carpet, please. Now do the same thing on the carpet. So now you can feel what it's like using the ground to do that. Use your momentum earlier. That's it. Cool. Different feel? Yeah, it helps with the board a lot. Exactly, yeah. so what these exercises are gonna do, they're gonna not just developing awareness they're going to create a reset yeah so basically it's a baseline that you go back to and you go all oh, right yeah that's it that's what i recognize how i can use the ground and then you go back and it's like oh yeah and it just refreshes that feeling yeah it definitely helps with the feeling and yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to be using lots of exercises which is going to create lots of different feedback loops and help you to optimize how you're using these forces like the hips spring to twist you that's it so the hips pop up and down so trot and then pop that's that's it so you'll almost spring off the discs 
There we go. Did you feel yourself almost lift off? Yeah. So drop now and see if you can pop off them. Yeah, that's it. So we're unweighted. We've got to get as much of our body weight into the floor. So when we're falling, we're multiplying our body weight into the floor. Then we've got to get off the floor as quick as we can and make ourselves weightless against the floor, essentially, as quick as we can. That's it. This is going to give you covered speed. As that swings up, Romy, you're dropping into that tennis ball. So we've got the body moving in two different directions. Well done. A little bit too together, that's all. Have another go. So as soon as this ball starts going that way, yeah. you're dropping into that tennis ball. Okay, this is good because what we're finding out is how difficult it is for you to separate the movement in such a small amount of time. Yeah. Because we haven't got time, you see. So it's like what we've got to do is we've got to stretch this timeline. If I can borrow that, watch this now. So we're, we're going to use the board. You can start on your back foot, rock it forward on one, as if you're throwing the ball on one, bang it back on two to swing the ball back, but then you're going to bang it back on three while the ball's still going up. Watch this. One, two, three. Okay. One, you bring it back on two and drop on three. Yeah, and the arms are going to stay up there with the ball. Ready? One, two, three. Brilliant. Because one, two, three, one, two, three, sets us up for number four. Really let yourself throw it back. And see if you can, yeah, see how much you can drop and leave that oh, thing that, behind. Yeah. yeah. We're going to really separate. Look at what your dad's doing. He's like, look, that's that's like, that's like a long drive champion. Look, that's, <laughs> look at that. Yeah. So hold it there. So we've got all this movement. Relax, relax. There we go. You've got okay, all this yeah. to use to keep. This is all power that you can that you can leave store ready for later. You can let that club go. But yes. Awesome. One, two. Look at this. Brilliant. Weird feeling? Yeah, it's just, it feels like a massive overswing. Does it? Is it? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> this is why the video is so important because it's obviously not. Yeah. Okay. It just shows you how tight you've been swinging. Yeah. So if this feels like an overswing, you've just been a bit too together. That's all with your swing. So now find that place again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Hold it there. Now spring up out into four. That's it. So there's four. This is going to be yeah. when we go vertical, okay? Don't be afraid to feel a sway. It's not a sway. It's what we need. Letting yourself explore that drop and pop. Well done. I'm going to take you into a space now with the drop. Yeah. Where we're going to feel ourselves go so far in and low into that place before the body wants to spring back out. Mm -hmm. Make a T shape, and then you're gonna tip the board and rotate. And then this is the key for us, is we're gonna let ourselves fall. So we've fallen into this place, because what's gonna happen from here, we're gonna spring back out of it. So we flex, drop in, and then we can spring. Just try that for me. Tip the board to the right, and then rotate all the way up to the right, as far as you can. There we go. Now we're going to fall. So you're going to, there. Look how low you can go. Now from there, you can spring and swing and rotate to the left. Now you can fall back to your right now and down and then spring out of there. Yeah, good. So this is the, that's it. That's the move, it's all fall. That's it, that's it. Then you can go and stump and you can fall. So you're feeling this, it's a wrecking ball action with the upper body. Yes, that's it. Yes, well done. Just have to remember to move the legs first. Yeah. Yeah, like separate them out. Happen. It'll happen when you're with a, when you've got a golf ball there. Trust me. Think of our low point of our swing. <clears throat> if this is where I am here, the low point of the swing is kind of just below the surface. Yeah. If I was to extend it out, what this is doing, this is giving you a sense of how low you can actually go. 
to be able to give you the opportunity now to spring, because as soon as you push, this is going to release. But what happens, Romy, is that that goes faster than the low point rising. So you catch the ball on, on its way to the low point. Yeah. But you're going up. But if we don't go down enough here to start in the, in the change of direction, the problem is, is if I push, I get an early release yeah. and I've got my old problem back where I start to hit it a bit spinny, it launches a bit high, you're creating some clubhead speed, but it's not, it's, it's not usable by the time you get to the ball. Mm -hmm. The direction we want to move into with our movement is start to, while this is getting thrown up there, to start to explore how far we can go down yeah. into this space. Just bring that up and meet it with your right arm now and feel how low you are. Yeah, you feel low. <laughs> yeah. Now this is not a position, this is, just, this is just how low you can actually go to then use the ground, because from here now you'll be, you'll be pushing off the ground. Yeah. yeah, and that's going to enable you to strike the ball. Yeah. So this is just giving you a sense of depth, depth perspective. That's all. If actually, what, what have I got to, to go? How, how far can I actually move up and down? Yeah. What's a lot? What's too much? What's not enough? I mean, that, yeah, I mean, that's super low, but it's allowing you now to jump. Exactly. Bear in mind, you would have, there's all this, this shifting mm -hmm. going on. These exercises are all just going to start to form to just kind of feeling. Yeah. A feeling with yeah. the swing. So you can go even more. Yeah, try it. Let's have a go. Yeah, at first, we might catch the ground, because if we're used to releasing a bit early, and now we're a lot lower, and we're, we're yeah. pushing, we might just catch the ground. But as you start to leave the release later, yeah. it all extends out later. Well done. Okay, that's all right. So what I want to do now is we need to be able to release this club a little bit later. Yeah. So just take your grip for me. So this is kind of an action you'll recognise. Mm -hmm. That won't feel too dissimilar, but that might not feel as noticeable. No. It might do, it might not, but essentially what we want to be doing is we want to, we want to be using some of this in the golf swing. Yeah. Okay. Because the more we can use this, the more we can. You rotate to your left now for me. Go on, really turn your shoulders. Because oh, it'll right, pull your arms. It'll pull. Look what it does. Yeah. It means it allows you to lag the club and bring it in square. If we're not closing the face, say it's square. Now, if you rotate for me, see what happens. Now, look. Yeah. Even if you move really, really efficiently with your body, it's difficult to square it up. And you yeah. probably, it depends how you're going to square it up. We want to explore letting this face rotate. Yeah. Does that feel a bit different? Yeah, a bit different. Okay. As opposed to that? Yeah. Because that's closing the face, but it's really adding loft, can mm. you see, as you're doing it. Yeah. Whereas if we can rotate the face this way, we can be de-lofting it and bringing the sweet spot down and compressing that golf ball. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like that. That's it, yeah. And again. Okay. One more. Just hold it there. Perfect. Now, put your right hand on. Now, keep the club there so the grip's in the same place. Now, shuffle to your right, but keep the hands there. Keep going, keep going, keep going. This is the kind of place we need to be striking the golf ball. Yeah. Now, without stopping, from this place now, I want you to swing back and through and take a divot. Good. Excellent. That's the sound we're after. Yeah. Does that feel a bit different? Yeah. Okay, just see if you can do it again. Awesome. If we have to use this to square the club up, suddenly the club <clears throat> is doing this. Yeah. But if we can use this, if we've got rotation this way, we can do whatever we like with this, and then we can let it go when we want. Yeah. But if, we, but if we've always got to use this mechanism to square the club up, I've always got this happening. And no matter what I do with my body, no matter how good I get, if I'm always squaring it up this way, I've got the release, the same release all the time. So it's just recognising this mm -hmm. rotation. And to do that, you can just take divots <clears throat> with that leading edge, just letting it rotate. So it's just a feeling. Yeah. Excellent.
Did you yeah. feel any difference in that? Yeah, on the last one, definitely. Yeah, what did you feel different? Just felt like I trusted it more to go lower. Yeah, because you could see, you know the movement we were making earlier? Yeah. That left hip, you start to really let yourself move into that place. Yeah, you did it again. You did it again, that was awesome. Well done. Brilliant. Just let the arms and club fall, swish it back, and swish it through into the finish. What I want you to recognise is how the jump, the pop, creates the snap of the club yeah. and how the snap of the club takes you to the finish. So we start to feel the effect of the jump. Yeah. Can you feel that? Yeah. So we want the snap as late as that. Sharp. Sure. Yeah, and again. Well done. Just let's pop inside. I'm going to do this exercise with you and your dad. We're going to go red and then yellow. And you're going to go onto, your, onto the balls of your feet. And you can see I'm bracing. So it's only half a step either way. So it's like a full stance width. So we go bang, bang. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Let's try that for me. Cool, so what we need is the, as you start to get your, to work into it, the intensity, which is firing that chain. And what we're actually doing here is we're directing the forces that we're pushing with. Yes, that's it. These are the speed chains. Awesome. Well done. So close there. Fantastic. Well done, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Marcus. Enjoyed that. Really good. Well really done, good. Romy. That was Thank awesome. you very much. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure yeah. to meet you. Okay, you, you too. Good to meet Pleasure you. Pleasure to meet you, Rebecca, as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for coming up. Brilliant, man. Yeah.